All right, this is the notes for section 10.6, the cosine and sine functions. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video, read the section before continuing on. Um, so we've been looking at the unit circle definition of sine and cosine. And, and now what we want to do is we want to look at functions, functions involving sine and cosine. So we're going to start off with the cosine function. And what we're saying with the cosine function is we're doing a correspondence between theta and the cosine of theta. Where we're talking about, when we talk about theta, we're talking about a rotation about the origin of the unit circle of 1, 0. So we're taking the point 1, 0 and we're rotating it theta degrees. Okay. Well, that theta value is going to be my x value. So if you think about an ordered pair, theta is your x value, and the cosine of theta would be your y value. So we're looking at a function, f of theta equals the cosine of theta. Okay. Well, to generate what the graph of that function looks like, what, what I want to do is I want to use the unit circle to kind of um, demonstrate that. Okay, so let's take a look at that and, and remember that, that the cosine of theta, that the, the domain of that would be all real numbers. We, we decided in the last section that we can, we can really put in any value for theta as soon as we, we look at it from a unit circle perspective. So let's see if we can generate the graph of the cosine of theta using that unit circle. All right, so we want to remember that the cosine is the x value. So if I look at, here I have the unit circle. Right now I'm, I'm looking at the point 1, 0. And so x is 1. The, the value of theta is 0 degrees to begin with. Okay? And what I want to do is I want to start plotting those points. So the first point I have plotted here, um, you'll notice the point 1, 0 is plotted. Now, as, as I move around this first quadrant, Okay. Notice how my x value is going to get smaller. It's getting closer and closer and closer to zero as I move through that first quadrant. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to animate that point, and I, and down here below it's going to graph that point by looking at those ordered pairs that relate theta with the cosine of theta, which is x. Okay. So take a look at what happens when I do that. Okay. So I've got the animation running, and as you can see, it's plotting those points as we go down. Okay, we're in the second quadrant now. Okay, hit the bottom. We're going to go to the third quadrant, and finally, we end up back where we started. So you'll notice that the graph goes from one all the way down to negative one. Okay, and as as it's going through, it's it's never going to it, it it's never going to get any higher than one or any lower than negative one. So when I think about the range of this function, the range is going to be between negative one and one, whereas the domain is all real numbers. And if I continue with my graph, if I continue out from there. Um, it's just going to keep repeating itself because once it's gone 360 degrees, it will just start all over again. So the sine, we we call this the cosine wave, okay? Because basically, what's happening is it just will keep doing that wave over and over and over again every 360 degrees, which is its period. So below here, I have that sine wave. Uh, for more than one period, so, or excuse me, cosine wave for more than one period. So here's a period goes 360 degrees, so from here to here, and then from there it's just repeating itself. Okay, Notice how it's the exact same thing over here and the exact same thing over here as well. Okay, So every 360 degrees it's just doing the exact same thing over and over again. Okay, So the range is between negative 1 and 1, and the domain is all real numbers. All right, just like we did a, uh, a correspondence between theta and cosine of theta, we can apply the same idea by looking at a correspondence between theta and the sine of theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a function, f of theta, where theta is my independent value, where to find, and I'm pairing it with, the sine of theta. Okay? 
So uh, if you think about the xy pairs of this function, the x value will be theta, and the y value will be the sine of that angle. Okay? Where once again, theta is a rotation of the point 1, 0. Okay? And the sine of theta is um, is is that the the y coordinate on the unit graph. So once again, we talked about with cosine, the domain was all real numbers. Well, the same thing applies with the sine of theta. Theta could be any value. We determined that when we when we did our unit circle definition of these two functions. So if that's the case, um, I want to I want to use that unit circle once again to to generate the graph. So let's take a look at uh, the similar idea to what we did with the cosine. So I have my unit circle here. Um, I have my y value is 0 and my, um, my, my value of the angle is 0 degrees. I have it listed as alpha here instead, just, just not to confuse the variables. So um, right now when it's 0 degrees, the value of y is 0. So I have that point plotted down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, I'm going to start tracing along the unit circle, and as I do that, you'll notice that my y value is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger through um, the first quadrant, and then once it hits 90 degrees, it's going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller all the way down to zero at 180 degrees, and then it's going to keep going down all the way down to negative one when it gets to 270 degrees, and then finally it's going to start rising again until it gets back to zero, the same place that it started when we get 360 degrees. So let's take a look at that as I play this out. Notice here's the first quadrant going up all the way, hits 90 degrees, starts going down, it's going to continue down through, there's 180 degrees, and we're coming up on 270 degrees it hits and then it's going to come back up and at 360 degrees it's going to be back to zero okay so um, that is a graph of the sine wave um, this, so it's generating e the exact same thing so um, here's what you can see uh, the sine wave Okay, it's once again it repeats itself. It has a period of 360 degrees. So every 360 degrees, it's repeating itself. Okay. So let's just summarize some of the uh, properties then of the sine and cosine functions. We know that the domain of both of them is a set of all real numbers. We know the range is the values from negative one to one. Now, as I look at the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts for the cosine of function is going to be odd multiples of 90 degrees. So negative 90, 90, 270, 450. So we're basically going every other uh, 90 degrees. So um, it's every 180 degrees, it's going to hit the x-intercept again. Um, as as we go along. So as, if I look at the sine function, it's at negative 180, 0, 180, 360. So in both cases, the x-intercept is every 180 degrees. It's just that um, they're, they're on, on different multiples there. For both of them, they have a period of 360 degrees. Remember, the period is the, the, the length on the x-axis that we go before that function, the, the graph repeats itself. Okay? And then finally, uh, the y-intercept for the cosine function is 1, and the, for the sine function is 0. Okay? Now, if you look at those two functions on the same graph, they are very, very similar to each other. They look ex almost exactly the same. And in fact, if I do a horizontal translation of the of either one of them, we'll get the other one. So, so what we do is this, is that we say they are what we call sine waves. Both the cosine of theta and the sine of theta are congruent to each other. And we, both, and we call them both sine waves. Now, I can show you that if you take a look here on the calculator. I have the green here, the cosine of theta, and the red is, is the sine of theta. I just have it as x because I left it as the x-axis here. But if I take this graph and I translate this graph 90 degrees, 
you'll notice that it sets and I, I'm not exactly at 90 but I'm pretty close and you can see it right there okay it sits right on top of the sine wave okay so those two waves are congruent to each other all right finally I'd like to take a look at this example problem it says suppose a bird lands on a ferris wheel uh, in the basket at, at the basket's highest position. Okay, that's important that we understand that it's at its highest position and rides for one complete revolution. If the Ferris wheel has a diameter of 180 feet and the center of rotation is 110 feet above the ground and the wheel takes 10 minutes to make one revolution, which sine wave below models the height of the bird t minutes after it lands on the ferris wheel okay a couple things that we want to keep in mind we know the highest point is 200 feet so i know when that bird starts uh, at zero minutes i know its height has to be 200 feet so i i know it just from that piece of information it's going to have to be graph b but let's look at the rest of it to kind of help me um, I know that the the that it it has a diameter of 180 feet. So if it has a hundred a diameter of 180 feet, the lowest the bird is ever going to get is 20 feet. So it's going to be this is the lowest point it's going to reach um, on that Ferris wheel. Okay, and then it's going to finish where it started, right back up at 200 feet, which this one does as well. And notice how the center of the rotation is at 110 degrees so it's going to go 90 degrees up this way and it's going to go 90 degrees down this way so 110 degrees would be exactly in the middle of those the, the, the highest point 200 and the lowest point 20 so the answer to this question would be graph B now notice how it's sinusoidal because if if I were to continue this it would just repeat this exact same curve every 10 minutes and 10 minutes is down here along the x-axis or the t-axis in this case.